Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And the topic is pericarditis, you know. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Uh, now I come to the topic, what is pericarditis, you know. You know, the pericarditis is a condition and in this condition, the sac surrounding the heart which is known as pericardium, you know. It becomes swollen and inflamed, you know. And you can develop this condition after having a heart attack. And uh, your risk is higher if uh, you have had any uh, other heart attacks, uh, serious chest injury, uh, open heart surgery. So in that case, your chances are high to develop the uh, pericarditis, you know and uh, it can be treated uh, but there is a chance that it can uh, return it can come back you know even after treatment and it can be life-threatening when it uh, it's uh, if it's left untreated you know uh, the next thing is what are the causes of pericarditis you know you know after the heart attack uh, the immune system tries to fix the a resulting damage to your heart tissues you know and uh, in cases of pericarditis instead of uh, repairing this damage uh, your body's immune system or immune response causes inflammation in the layers of the tissues uh, that surround your heart you know so the exact reason uh, why this happens uh, is not known you know and uh, it occurs in about 10% of the people who have the heart attacks. Uh, the next thing is what are the types of pericarditis? Well, uh, one type of pericarditis occurs within two to five days uh, uh, followed by the heart attack, you know. And uh, the other type which is known as the uh, uh, Dressler syndrome occurs uh, weeks or even months after the heart attack. And the both types are believed to occur as a result of your body's attempt uh, to repair uh, itself. You know. you know, the next thing is about the symptoms. Well, how soon after the heart attack that uh, your symptoms uh, start will depend on which type of the pericarditis you know. And one of the most common symptoms uh, or the chest pain and it might feel like a sharp pain or may feel like tightness in your chest you know and the pain might be worse when you are inhaling or lying down you know and uh, it might also disappear when you move to an upright position you know or stand up you know so you might feel the pain spread to your neck your back your shoulders or maybe to the abdomen you know. and uh, you should call your doctor if you have any of these symptoms uh, and if they last longer than few minutes you know uh, the other symptoms that may include or may be associated with or maybe the shortness of breath uh, fever fatigue uh, a rapid heartbeat you know a dry cough and anxiety you know or maybe generalized feeling of illness, you know. Uh, if it's left untreated, it can lead to a serious complications like uh, uh, cardiac tamponade, you know, uh, constrictive pericarditis, or maybe congestive heart failure. So these are the possible complications if it's left untreated. Uh, the next thing is about how do doctors diagnose this condition, you know. Well, your doctor will, uh, they will listen to your heart, you know, with the stethoscope. They will ask the questions about the uh, pain, you know, or any history of illness, you know. And uh, if there is a, uh, when your doctor listens to your heart, you know, if uh, that sound is like scratchy or maybe like a, a rubbing sound, you know, so which is the indication of that there is inflammation, you know. And uh, 
the heartbeat that sounds uh, distinct uh, is often associated with the fluid buildup of in the pericardium, you know. And this occurs uh, more often with the Dressler syndrome, which is the second type of uh, uh, the pericarditis, you know, which occurs after maybe weeks or months after the heart attack. And uh, the other tests that might uh, be helpful, you know, maybe x-rays of the chest, you know, uh, electrocardiogram or echocardiogram, and maybe the blood test to check the inflammation, you know. So these are the tests your doctor will use uh, uh, to diagnose the condition, you know. Uh, once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options? Well, the treatment uh, uh, is done uh, to decrease the inflammation and the manage the pain and the other symptoms, you know. And there are two ways to treat. One is with the medications and other one is the fluid drainage, you know. Now, sometimes over the counter medications they relieve the pain such as aspirin or naproxen, etc. You know. And the if they don't work, the doctor may prescribe the medications like uh, uh, corticosteroids that may be used to, you know, uh, if over the counter medications are not effective, you know. And uh, the medications to use the uh, to decrease the inflammation but uh, it can cause the kidney or the liver damage in the people with uh, certain health issues you know so the corticosteroids uh, uh, also reduce the inflammation you know uh, but they are only prescribed uh, if other drugs don't work well you know and not respond you know and they can cause the severe side effects okay so uh, uh, So they should be used uh, with care, you know. And the second option is about the fluid drainage, you know. Like uh, you might need to have the excess fluid drained if you have uh, like more severe case of uh, Dressler syndrome, you know. And the procedure is known as pericardiosynthesis, you know. Okay. And uh, it's done by inserting a needle or a thin tube into your chest uh, to drain the fluid. And uh, another option is surgery, you know, which is more invasive, you know. Uh, so you might need uh, the pericardium surgically removed if uh, it's scarred or it's thick enough to prevent your heart from functioning properly. You know, in that case, uh, a doctor will perform a surgery to remove the uh, pericardium, which is known as pericardectomy, you know. Uh, you can reduce your chance of having the heart attack by like adopting the heart healthy diet uh, lifestyle changes and controlling your blood pressure and uh, other heart issues properly you know? just follow the instructions by your doctor so this way you can lower the risk of heart attack Exercise regularly, stop smoking, uh, stop alcohol, uh, and uh, if you have any underlying health condition, uh, just focus on the proper treatment, you know. So this way you can reduce the risk of having the uh, pericarditis. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel thank you goodbye